I did it again. Hey, honey. I, um, I, I think I have a problem. I, I think I'm addicted to online auctions. So back in 2019, I had an idea and I talked about it with our comms and PR department at NetApp about how we could not only talk to the street when we made announcements and launches, we could also talk to the community, our fan base, our users, our practitioners, our partners around the technical merits of how to use certain things. And we kind of did some of that with traditional blog posts and things like that around social media, but we never really like truly engaged. So I had this idea to do kind of a Linus Tech Tips version of stuff for enterprise and you know some of our hardware. Let's get our boxes out, let's open them up, let's pull the controllers out, let's play with the discs, let's wire them up. Bam, 2020 hits, lockdown for a year. So it took me a year to really get it going, right? Uh, in early 2021, uh, the first video that I worked on with Scott Bell, uh, my, my good friend over uh, uh, working in platforms, got me uh, access to a lot of information and we made the A250 video. And I was able to go into the data centers in Raleigh and actually shoot the video. Uh, it's been a huge hit, people have loved it, right? Since then, we've done the launch of FSX ONTAP later that year. We did the A900 launch video at the end of 21 after I had moved to Vegas. Uh, which is its own story that I think you guys have kept up with. Part of the journey of that whole thing was rescuing two cabinets, uh, putting those, some of those storage arrays in it, plus some of my other own personal gear and things like that to keep things organized here in the studio. But what we got to was a point where, okay, I've got all of this storage sitting here. Other than my own personal PCs and Mac equipment, I don't really have a lot of compute that I can throw at this to really generate any load. So I started looking for, okay, what would make, hmm, what would make good servers to use if I wanted to build a small ESX farm that maybe wouldn't draw more than an amp each, power requirements and things like that, that I could actually safely run in the house on 110, 110 volt here in the US. So I started looking for servers. Well, that led me down the path that you guys saw uh, on the journey last week of finding the public auction sites, the, the gray market surplus uh, uh, areas and stuff for municipalities. And that led to a couple of DS4243 shelves, right? So we got those in the rack. We're gonna get those cabled up. But all in all, the story, a reason I tell you all that story is because that's the story to this point. What we are going through currently and what we will be going through in the future is what I'm loosely referring to as dependency hell. And I think what it really does is shines a spotlight on the day-to-day -day ops community and what it's like to run a data center. And if I can just, if you'll humor me, I'll run you through a few examples, right? We were just talking about the 4243 shelves. The last number in that indicates three gigabit per second SAS. Well, that's old. These things are from 2012, I believe. So they've got three gigabit SAS module con controller modules in the back of them. Well, we can do better than that. So I called up my good friends back at the data center. They've got some IOM6 modules laying around. So we're gonna swap those out, but those require different cables than the ones that I've got, as well as the IOM12 modules that I've already got over here for 12 gig SAS. So now we've got to swap out some cables, right? Oh, and the other dependency that was built in was you guys know that I previously had an A200, right? Well, that has been swapped out as well. It is now a FAS2650. Uh, bezel's coming, other pieces are coming, and we're gonna take the FAS2650 and hook that up to these shelves. We've still got the DS2246, and we've still got some of the internal SSDs to go with it. Those are probably gonna get broken out into a separate shelf as well, swapped out for some 10 gig SAS, maybe 15s if I can find them. Anyway, so we're now got an A250, right? Sorry, no, it's a FAS 500F. No, wait, it's a C250 now. So we've got that guy here. We've got the FAS 2650 that's gonna hook up to a 2246. So we're gonna have 48 total SSDs and we're gonna have 48 total three and a half inch drives once I get them all fully populated. The problem is, is the 2650 has IOM 12 modules in it. So I'm gonna take that out and put in IOM 6s so that they match up to what is in the DS4246 shelves now once I get those. First dependency solved, right? Hmm, okay. But now I need to run all this power. Bam. Ah, okay, so I need power strips. 
got to go back and find some more PDUs. Uh, I really would like those monitored so that I can incorporate them into some software. So now we're waiting on some PDUs to show up. Now, the latest one, as you guys saw at the beginning of the video, was servers. And that was the whole point of really this video was kind of show you guys some of the server stuff that I got. And when I did the adventure video last week and you guys went on that trip with me out to San Luis Obispo to pick up the 4243s and the, the new side panel that's installed in the cabinet now. What else did I get? Oh yeah, whole bunch of blanks and I'm swimming in blanks and rack rails and <laughs> any, anybody need some 220 PDUs? Cause I can't use them. Anyway, here's the grand plan. And we're going to we're going to talk about some servers and then I wanted to go over the plan with you guys because the videos that are coming up on a weekly basis from this point forward are going to be building this out. And I want to go through every single step of the process with you guys. And I really want it to be a fun journey for those of you that have spent years and years and years building out data centers and managing the day to day operations. How do you manage IP addresses? How do you cable manage? How do you color coordinate uh, and make a plan? Um, IPAM and IP address management, deployment of a new system, uh, setting up permissions, correct? all of it. We're literally going to, I'm dragging my feet on putting all of this stuff in the rack and just turning it on so that we can go through it step by step through the whole process. So first things first, let's talk about the recent acquisition, the big haul of servers that you guys might have seen. And that is seven. I was able to get 10 total servers. Seven of them are DL360P HP uh, ProLiant servers, right? These are 1U servers with, I believe, what is it, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 drive bays on the front, which I'm going to put two in for an, o, for an ESX instance or whatever OS I decide to run on it. Everything else is going to come off the storage arrays. But the beauty of these is these have the E2600 series V2 CPUs. They are dual CPU. And of the seven 360s that I got, the seven one U ones, I got uh, two of them had 16 gigs of RAM already, and the rest of them had 64. So this may be an exercise in just keeping spare parts around and consolidating all of the RAM down to three of those for any a smaller ESX management cluster, right? So let's take a look at, uh, at that one real quick from an overhead. All right, so to open this guy up, you just quick little pop up of that right there, and she lifts right out, and there we go. So you can see, uh, these are all actual HP Genuine parts. I did see the stickers the other day. They're all still on there. You can see the, that this has got, uh, what is that? Those are eight gig sticks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is one of the 64 gig models. This is probably going to go in a small ESX management farm. Um, the two that have 16 gigs, we're probably going to use one for a PF Sense and maybe another one for a jump host of some kind, but to be determined at this point. Uh, we also, on the back, each one of these, this one has a four port gigabit NIC uh, in it. So we've got that already. Uh, we'll talk about the 380s in just a second because they've got some more good stuff, but we've got some extra expansion and, and stuff like that. Now, one, the big hurdle so far that I've got to get past with, uh, with all of these is KVM right now. So I've got to find a way to at least get ILO initially set up so that I can remote manage it. So there's the 360, lock it in, and we'll put it back in the rack. All right, the next one we need to talk about are the bigger boys. The 2U version of that platform, known as the DL380PG8. These are genera generation eight. I think they're on gen 10 right now in the ProLiant line. Uh, if we open this big boy up, things get a little bit more interesting. So in the each of the, there were five DL380s listed for auction. I won three of them. I bid on all five and I had the winning bid on all five, but for some reason they extended the auction at the end and somebody went in and sniped two of them in the last, literally the last 60 seconds out from under me and I wasn't able to, to get them back. So the beauty of this is I bought the 360s for about $45 a piece and I got the DL380s for about, yeah, I think it was either 65 or $80 a piece. Guys, you can see they are all but fully populated, all right? Take our fan shroud off here. We've got 100, these are 16 gig modules and there's eight of them. We've got 128 gigs of RAM in here. Two of the, let's see if we've got the exact model number. These are the E5 2637 V2s 
and uh, both of them are populated in here, right? So we've got two of those with 128 uh, gigabytes of RAM, all right? Fan shroud back in. Now, not to be slept on, we do have onboard connectivity, onboard ILO. We've got four ports. Uh, we've got a four port, one gig card, but we also have one of the HP certified dual port 10 gig NICs in each of these DL380s. Now, that alone, having the four port expansion for one gig and the two port extension for ten, expansion for 10 gig alone makes this worth the purchase because each of those cards would have been about 100 to $150 each. So to have all of that available to me on day one was an absolute game changer and sealed the deal for me. So all in for under $1,000, I got 10 servers. Uh, and then I used a service called U-Ship since it was all the way up in Northern California, up in, the, up in wine country. Um, if you guys hang out in the, one of the discords or if you guys seen some of my posts on social, you know where it came from, but I don't want to name them here on a YouTube video because it was a local municipality that was doing the auction, but it's publicly out there. You guys can find it if you know where to dig. All of these were available on auction uh, through, you know, hardware refreshes and things like that. The amount of stuff that you can find out is insane. There are Nexus 7Ks out there for on auction. There are 208 volt three phase PDUs out there and they're going for pennies on the dollar. So for me to be able to get 10 servers for you know, roughly seven to $800 is what, is what was spent on them. They don't have drives in them, but you can find those for 25 bucks a piece. So I got a few of those coming. So we can't put anything on this yet unless I wanted to do it on thumb drives, which I don't. We can't put anything, so dependency hell, right? All right, I got the servers. Cool, what's next? Now I need drives to put it on. Cool, those are coming. What's next? Well, I need licenses. Okay, got that sorted out. What's next? Now we need power solutions. PDUs have been ordered. Okay, that's done. What's next? You see where this comes from? We needed a to update our networking stack. And that's what I'm gonna leave you hanging with today. Um, what we've got, so I've got a mishmash of switches and all kinds of stuff everywhere. If you guys look in here, I've got an older Netgear 24 port. It's a GS724T for those that are into model numbers, but it's about 10 years old. And I don't have anything else Netgear in the rack and I'm a little bit OCD about that. What I do have is a couple of or uh, uh, 10 gig switches from Microtik. Uh, and I've got this older eight port one and I've got one of the newer 16 port ones that are my production ones right now. So here's what we're gonna do. Uh, let me see if I can pull this out for you guys real quick. I ended up picking up one of their newer 24 port uh, switches. You can see they're a little half height uh, in width, but they've got 24 one gig ports. You can even power it with PoE in port one. So you can literally power the thing from a PoE you know, producer or any other switch that has PoE. You don't even have to plug the, the transformer block into the back of it. So 24 one gig ports, non PoE, and then you have two SFP plus ports that support two and a half, one gig, two and a half, and 10 gig uplinks, right? So my thought is I can take this switch as a core switch, top of rack. I can get, I've got another one on the way. So I'm gonna have one of each in each of the cabinets. And we're gonna have the 16 port, 10 gig in one cabinet. And we're gonna have the eight port, 10 gig in the other cabinet. That way we're all Microtik across all of our networking. We can VLAN everything out properly. We can uplink the 10 gigs up to the core switches uh, on that side or on the top of rack switches, I should say. I even had a crazy thought to put a 19 inch two post rack in between that, but just no Nick, no Nick. All right, so there's the networking plan. Now we've got to get IP addresses laid out. Currently that's all in a spreadsheet. I want to put that in a proper piece of IPAM software. So PHP, IPAM, InfoBlocks, we'll, we'll look at a few different options and that'll be in a future video where we go through all of that stuff. But that's the layout right now. We've got, we're gonna have three DL580s uh, in an ESXi cluster, probably vSphere 7. I need to check that hardware compatibility because I believe the latest certified one from HP is like vSphere 6.5. You can probably run V8 on these because all of the network adapters are the same for the most part. We're gonna try it. We're gonna see what the latest version I can actually get on there is. So three DL580s um, in a ESXi cluster, probably another two in a management cluster. Um, and then I think I'm gonna use one of the other 360s as a PFSense rig. That's gonna be a fun video to make where we're setting all of that up to front end the entire network. 
and firewall everything, do some ad blocking, do all kinds of fun stuff. If you're familiar with PFSense, it's another product along the lines of a firewall or some of these other gateway um, open source projects that are out there uh, to be able to manage some of that stuff. So we're gonna be doing all the networking, IP address management, we're gonna stand ESX up, we're gonna put vCenter in place, and I mean, from that point, you guys know the sky's the limit once we get all that up and running. But we're gonna have good compute. We've got a ton of storage to work with, primary and secondary storage. Um, and I think the grand finale of all of this is gonna be completely evacuating everything out of the racks and reorganizing everything spread out evenly across both cabinets. And I might do that as like a big live stream. We'll do a time-lapse version of it as a video uh, just to show it all. But yeah, I think a good old-fashioned scheduled downtime might have to take place in order to uh, to get all of this stuff set up in the rack. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I'm looking forward to getting the servers in. Uh, there's gonna be a separate video setting up all of the ILO, cabling everything up uh, once we get PDUs, once we get networking in place and all of that stuff. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that. But until next time, take care.